Greetings from the Garden State is sponsored by the Priscilla E. Frederick Foundation. Founded by Priscilla Loomis, the mission is to provide assistance and relief to individuals, families, communities, and organizations through the generosity and love of people. They focus on single-parent households, community advocacy, and random acts of kindness. Through fundraising, they hope to provide scholarships, assist with academic expenses, support community outreach, and much more. If you'd like to learn more, head to PriscillaLoomis.com. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. We uh, have traveled our furthest ever. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I don't think we can go much farther than this. So I'm your host, Mike Cam. As always, we're down here in Wildwood, New Jersey today with my good friend Priscilla Frederick Loomis. Priscilla, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so, so much. I feel so honored that you came all the way, I'm going to say across the pond, and just came to Wildwood. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I mean, it felt like driving across. Oh, uh, yeah. yes, I mean, yes. But it is what it is. It's not terrible. Like, no. It's certainly doable. Took one pit stop, you know, that's it. But I feel like every time somebody comes to Wildwood, they're like, oh, we're going to Wildwood. Yeah. Like, it's a trek. It's yeah. like this trip. But as soon as you cross the bridge, you're like, oh, you're this is awesome. Yeah. yeah, this is this is good. Yeah, I told my dad, I was like, he's like, where are you going this weekend? Because, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, someplace. Yeah. And he's, I said Wildwood, and he's like, oof. That's, that's a ride. That's it. I'm like, I know. I'm aware. I've been down here before. Um, but it's so worth it. I feel like yeah. it's one of these places that is like a hidden gem. And so I have absolutely loved it. So I'm super, super excited that you're here. Yeah. I'm very humbled that you traveled to me. Of course. And I'm so glad we're meeting. I know. This is the first time ever. And I've known you now for what, like over I guess a it's, year? Yeah. It's I think it's two. Yeah. Yeah. Two years? I think so. Wow. I'm telling you, time is flying. It's crazy. Yeah. It's but I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, and it's a gorgeous day. So you came on a great weekend. Yeah. So yeah. it I couldn't got to be better. My brand new greetings from the Garden State. And, and of course, jersey. I'm like, this is like, you have your own gear now. Like, you yeah. are legit. We're super legit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. So we're at uh, Mud Hen. Yes. Right. And this is a spot that I'm sure you come to a decent amount. Right? Yeah. So as soon as you enter into Wildwood, you go over uh, exit four, and you're going to see it. It's a huge sign, and I think you saw it yeah, when, you first got, yeah. <laughs> when you first got in. Yeah. You can't miss it. Right. And it used to be an old Harley Davidson. See, that I, that makes sense. Like, I yes. get the vibe of yes. now that you say that. And uh, the owner did an amazing job, and um, so it's a brewery, yeah. and it's one of the only ones on the island, and yeah. it has literally just taken over, taken over the island. It's yeah. great, great food, great people, and so I wanted to start here. My husband is a bartender here in the yeah. summers, and so great people, great vibe, and so um, this is where I figured it would be a great place to start, especially so like right over Exit 4. Exactly, and see, this is why <laughs> I traveled all this way yes. to make sure that like somebody else put together this whole episode for me, yeah. which normally doesn't happen. Exactly. So it was amazing. Um, but uh, so there's but there's more than just that. Like oh you're yes. Not just a, a nobody that's just <laughs> jumping on the show. Um, but and you were on my old show, yeah. uh, the Morning Spotlight, back I guess I guess two years ago. I'm guessing. A year and a half yeah. plus, whatever it is. And um, let's just say ten years. Let's yeah, just call it. We're old friends. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, so I wanted the people to know a little bit about your backstory. Okay. Um, so you're not born in Jersey. No, right? I, I was that. not. No, I was not born in Jersey. Yeah, I won't hold it against you. I, <laughs> You're still allowed to be on the show. For the amount of time that I've spent here, I, I, I'm like a half and half. That's, yeah. that's me. I'm like, I'm a wonderful blend. Right. right? So I was born in Queens, New York. Okay. And uh, by a single parent. I love my mom. She did a great job. It was just my sister, her and I. And we, uh, we lived in New York City. We lived in Queens. We lived it up. And yeah. then after a while, my mom just couldn't raise us by herself anymore. She needed more stability, a little bit less chaos. Um, and so we moved to Jersey. We moved right down to South Jersey. Yeah. And we started in Blackwood okay. in that area of Voorhees. And so that's where I went to middle school and high school. And I loved it. I loved being from Jersey. I know Jersey gets a bad rap. That's because people are jealous. I always say that. Yeah, peanut people butter and love, jelly. People love to, you know, yeah. pull down people that are, like, high up. Oh, yeah. You know? So everybody makes fun of Jersey because they're just jealous yeah. of the stuff that we have. But we also have all four seasons. We have yeah. we have beautiful, obviously, we're the Garden State. We have so much to offer. So you're right. Haters are going to hate, hate, yeah. hate. Right. Thank you, T-Swift. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. I knew yeah. I was going to 
going to plug you know, Taylor Swift somewhere. Like a summer home yes. down here someplace. Yes, I forget exactly the, the town over. Yeah. Yes, exactly. it's like Avalon yeah. Stone Harbor, yeah. and she used to play there and stuff like that. Oprah has a house down here. Like, because yeah. they get it. Yes, they get trust, it. Trust and believe. And yeah. have you ever noticed, like, celebrities? They all are like, oh, I'm Real Housewives of New York. Your house is in Jersey, but <laughs> your house is in Ver- like what New you York doing? Giants, New York right? Jets. Like everything is here. <laughs> so I just need the haters to yeah. fall back a little yeah, bit. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, so so born in Queens, but then moved to Jersey. Yes. And then uh, you had a pretty good athletic career, but yes. also like a theater career, if I remember correctly, yes. too, right? Yeah, great memory. I'm like I know, you're a savant. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Take me through that, like those kind of interests growing up and doing all the things that you were doing and kind of keep piecing the story together as we go. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, again, still with my mom and my sister and I, we lived in an apartment, and my mom would always, she always worked like three or four jobs to make sure that we, she sent me to private school. And so... Um, you know, in those years, finding myself and going through different struggles, different, you know, life experiences. And um, I wound up at Paul VI High School in Haddonfield, New Jersey, and fell in love with theater, like head over heels. And uh, track became kind of like a side piece. It yeah. was like my like, little side hustle <laughs> on the side, you know. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. I loved the balance. I loved the school. And, you know, I saw everything. I went through, I went through, you know, when you go through racism and you go through um, sexism, you don't really realize it as a, as a younger kid. You're yeah. just like, people You're are just oblivious. mean. You're yeah, just like, right. people are just mean, yeah. right? So you don't really label it those kinds of things. But I went through a lot growing up and, uh, you know, finding my crew and all that kinds of stuff and yeah. finding friendships. And it was just a really liberating experience. And, um, yeah, but I loved being on stage, and that's why I wanted to just go to New York City. I was like, I'm going back to New York. Uh, That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to be a struggling actress, and I'm going to crush it. I'm yeah. just going to crush it. And then yeah. I'll turn it to Beyonce. Mm-hmm. And that's my life. And I'm going to be freaking awesome. Sounds great. My plan was really solid. <laughs> yeah. Sound foundation. Yeah. If and I, I, ha- I mean, my life plans, like if yes. they at some point come to fruition, I'm going to be crushing it. Yes. Yeah. Crushing it's gonna it. Be great. Any little part of it. Any right? little bit. Yeah. Even like a fraction of it is going to be great. Exactly. Um, okay. So. 1% of Beyonce is still a better day than it is. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll take 1% right? of Beyonce. I'll take- That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Me too. Um, but, uh, all right. So. Um, I also love doing these episodes because, like, you know how, like, a lot of podcasters, I mean, because you have a podcast, yes. right? And, like, they always have to record, like, in a studio yes. or whatever. This is, like, chaos, real life, chaos real life out here. And, and I love it. That's why I loved your podcast because you do go out and you are getting in the element, right? Yeah. Like, nothing, and I guess that's kind of why... I'm not a big fan of, like, reality shows because it's, like, you're not showing reality. Yeah. Stop this it. Like, real. this is all, like, yeah. planned and scripted. Yeah. So that's why I love, you know, Greetings from the Garden State because it's it's you're getting the real-life experiences. Oh, yeah. You're getting... There's stuff happening. Yeah. They're, they're open. There's people all around us. Yes, yes. It's, like, Jeep Weekend or something. It is Jeep Weekend. It's yeah, a huge, a it's a huge event. Yeah. And I want a Jeep so bad. So it's, like, a little bit, like, <laughs> envious for me. I'm just, like, if I steal a Jeep, will I get away with it? Well, <laughs> you blend in easily. I will. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, no, this is mine. I yeah, claim this. Mine. This is yeah, mine. Right. Well, the license plate? Right. No, that's, that's <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, okay. I yeah. fell in love with theater, and I absolutely loved it. And so that was my plan to move back to New York and just live my life and be a struggling actress. And, you know, a coach, my the head coach at the time sat down and said, look, you have to pay for college some way, and, you know, track is a viable option. And I was like, no, it's not. So then I went to my guidance counselor, and he said, before you even step on campus, you're going to owe $180,000 worth of debt. Yeah. And I was like, I work at Applebee's. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> not like, great. That is not my checkings and savings yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, I had to really take a deep look at myself and figure out what I wanted to do and how to make it work and how to not put more of a burden on my mom. Right. Right. So do you have uh, siblings? I forget. I have one sister. one sister. Yeah. So I have a sister and um, I have uh, step siblings as gotcha. well. Yeah. yeah. So but it's just my sister and I and uh, we are complete opposites <laughs> complete like there's i don't think there's anybody on the planet that's more opposite than my sister and yeah. i but um i love her she's great um she actually has going on seven kids wow okay oh, so exactly so opposite. Like the fun aunt. zero i am yeah. the awesome aunt. yeah that's awesome that's a great role <laughs> yes to be in. i'm like you guys want a drone <laughs> you want a dirt bike yeah 
She's like, what are you doing? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I, I mean, I take a hard look at my life, and I decided that, you know, it was time to make a make a move. So I was like, how do I get a scholarship? Right. Right? That's a normal question. Right. And my guidance counselor was just like, you're not really good enough to to like get get a scholarship academically or athletically and that was kind of the first time that somebody doubted me yeah. for my abilities right and i and in that moment at that young age i realized ain't nobody gonna tell me about myself <laughs> yeah. like there's nobody that's right. allowed to do that yeah and so i literally just walked out of his office uh, with such a sense of purpose and it, that's what you need right yeah. like from the dirt flowers grow, plants grow. So sure. for me, I'm like, you know what? I'm about to thrive. I'm about to grow. And so I figured out what I needed to do to get an athletic scholarship. What were people jumping? What were people running? Because I was a track and field athlete. And um, I did it. I did it two weeks later. That's pretty <laughs> so, good. So, yeah, yeah like I, I, was, I was super determined, yeah. right? Because I went from like, okay, she's all right to yeah. being like, where did yeah. she come from? Women, right. Winning Jumping anything. Yep, yeah. winning everything. And so I was like, all right, this is my time. Yeah. And so... I went to New Balance Nationals, which was Nike Nationals, and um, I had college offers. And I was like, where are you? Like, Alabama, Georgia. I was like, nope, nope, nope. And then New York City came knocking, and they yeah. was, he was like, I was like, where are you? He's like, New York City. I said, done. Where do I sign? He's like, you don't want to see? I was like, I don't need to know any of that. Are you offering me a full ride? We're good. Let's yeah. do it. And that's exactly how the journey John's, started. Right? St. John's University. Yeah. 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 So it was just such a, and you know, I look back now and I'm so grateful for that experience because I needed that. I needed to be pushed right. and it was shaping who I was becoming. Yeah. Like I needed people to doubt me. I needed people to be negative. Like, I, like people wanted to kick me off my track team because I would skip practice for a play rehearsal. Right. And I was just like, whatever. If y'all yeah, want to kick me off. jump higher than you. Right. And that's it. <laughs> that was it. Like that was like the confident swagger that I had. So, and I, all of this, I was still a dork, you know, like I was still like super geeky. So it was just like finding myself. And when I look back at that experience, it was so incredible. But yeah, I went to St. John's University and um, I crushed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for that experience. I was a, I would say a big fish in a small pond. And uh, in, in that retrospect, because, you know, you could go to LSU sure. or you can go to Texas and, you know, these schools are ginormous. But I knew that I wanted to make a name for myself and this was my opportunity to. Yeah. And I wanted to thank my mom. I do everything for my mom. Everything is to repay her and say thank you for all your all your sacrifices, what you've done, your mission in life. And I've seen her struggle, so everything that I do is is for her. So yeah, which is it was awesome. he, it was it was incredible to be able to do that and to have her come to certain track meets and see me win and just do really well in college. And so I majored in international communications with a focus in television and film, so I could kind of keep that sure. acting thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I went to the 2012 U.S. Trials. And that's how I ended my college career. So it was a pretty cool career, yeah, I guess. That's pretty cool. In college, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, most people can't say, you know, can't check all those boxes off yeah. during their college I'm a big, career. I'm a big box checker. Yeah, big <laughs> box checker. Especially when someone's like, there's no way you can check this box. I love it. You know what's so funny, too? And this is just going to get off topic. But um, we had on Courtney Roselle. Yes. Uh, who competed in um, the Rocks Titan Games. Yes. And she's a badass. I love watching the clips on your Instagram. Like, yeah. I rewatch them because she, she is so phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. And, phenomenal. like, the same types of things that you're talking about also was yep. fueling her at the exact same yeah, time. Yeah. And I think that's just so cool because it's, you know, two successful people yep. that have the similar kind of backstory and, yep. and uh, backstory. Yeah. Um, so, but the athletic career doesn't stop because that happened to me. My athletic yeah, yeah. career was done after college. Yeah. Um, but then for you, it did not stop. It so did not. 2012, you went to the U.S. Olympic trials. Olympic trials. Yes. And then I was placed 24 out of 24. I was seated to get last. Okay. And I came in seventh. And I didn't make the team because you have to be top three. Okay. And I was super ecstatic. I was so happy that yeah. I did it. And I didn't know what I wanted to do after that. And I took a kind of like a year off to kind of like, oh, you know, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to figure things out. Working sucks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you yeah. something. Sorry, That's guys. This is a real talk here on This is a real right? talk. So. My mom always said, you know, you can act at any age, you can work at any age, you can't jump at any age. True. So she was like, why don't you pursue it and give it 100%? So I called my coach. I said, look, 
let's do this. So I moved back home and I started training uh, for the 2016 games. And I have dual citizenship. My dad is from Antigua and Barbuda, and he was born and raised there. My mom is from Dominican Republic, born and raised. And so I represented Antigua and Barbuda. And my first meet internationally was Scotland. And that was amazing. And so I just started traveling the world being this unsigned professional athlete. Yeah. Because when you go to different meets, you get paid, but no one was paying me. So I wasn't signed by Nike or Puma or anything, but I knew that that was my goal. So I always had like my vision board of all the things that I wanted to do, what do I want to accomplish. I wanted to get sponsored by Red Bull and Coors Light and, you know, like all these like big, big dreams. And when you get into it, you don't realize what it all takes, uh, what you got to do, the day to day grind. And so as I was traveling and training, I was enjoying it, but I put so much pressure on myself to get a deal because I wasn't real if I didn't get a deal. Right. So... I, you know, I travel, which is, which is something that most athletes yeah. have to deal with as well. Yeah, you know, because like everyone sees any kind of athlete, oh yeah, basically like any sport, and be like, oh, they must make like millions, yeah. like money over hand over fist. And, and if you think about it, it's the one percent of the one percent. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, you, everyone would always ask me like, well, how do you make money? How do you do stuff? And I, I got a small stipend from the country, and I, when I mean small, I mean I made, you know. Twelve thousand dollars a year. Right. So it's not great. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a numbers guy. I can't. I can't. (laughs) Me neither. I'm not a numbers chick. Yeah. But I knew that math was not adding up. So you know, like I was doing odds and ends to make it work. But you know, living at home and um, my mom making dinners and stuff. Like you know, I was competing against the best of best in the world, and my mom was cooking me rice and beans at home. You know, like it was just such a different kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Than I saw with other people. But, um, you know, and dealing with, still dealing with my weight and dealing with mental issues and dealing with sexism again and racism again. And it was just all piling on. But I just always had to be this warrior and be this, you know, positive light in myself. But it didn't come uh, for many years because I was just so hard on myself. Right. And so I loved competing internationally, but I wanted to be better. And I guess that's that's always great about athletes is that we always want to push ourselves to be better. Yeah. But at what point are you happy um, with where what you're doing, what your outcome is? Because, I mean, even when I got an agent, I was like, oh, look, I got an agent. But now he was just like, you need to be here. You need to do this. You got to do this. This is our focus. This is a business. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Right. So it just kind of changed that focus a bit. But yeah. I absolutely loved it. And uh, I had my best my best year is 2015 and 2016. And I earned my first international medal at the Pan American Games. I got a silver medal. And then that following summer, I went to the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. That's awesome. It's not yeah. every day that you talk to a, an Olympian, no. at least face to face. Yeah. Because you know? we've talked virtually like, yes. a bunch of times, but yes, obviously yes. face to face. And I love this, by yeah. the way. It's, yeah, no, this is fantastic. This is, this is great. So, um, what was the, just like, you know, you don't have to go like deep dive. You can go as deep as you want. I really don't care. But um, <laughs> that experience, like competing in the 2016 games, I, cause I, um, it must have been like a, just a kind of otherworldly experience, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. You know what it is? I look back on it, and if you would have asked me in 2016, as soon as I got home, I'd have been like, oh my gosh, it was so amazing. It's so cool. I'm an Olympian. I got the tattoo. I got the <laughs> rings. I'm good. Like, and now that I look back, yeah, I got the necklace. Yeah. yeah. And so it's one of those things that the first time around I was I was so hyped, but I didn't enjoy it enough. I was so focused on making it. And then when I come home, people are like, did you medal? Did you win a medal? Yeah. Did you win a medal? Right. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter to anybody. Unless you win a medal, you're nothing. I still right? think it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. But it's one of those things where I I had a very different experience at the Olympics. I cried a lot at the Olympic Games. Um, I was dealing with a lot of sexism, which definitely kind of painted a different picture for me. Yeah. And I had, you know, great friends there that, like, supported me and helped me. But they were there competing at the Olympics, too, right? Yeah, right. So I don't want to bring them down. Exactly. Um, but it made me so incredibly strong. It really did. I got to meet, you know, Serena Williams. I got to meet uh, Michael Phelps. I got to meet the Fab Five. And so Usain Bolt. It was great. But getting to train with these these incredible athletes, getting to live this dream that I worked so hard for. I worked eight years for one day. Right. So in that 
retrospect, I have to be kind to myself. I have to give myself that kind of grace. Yeah. But on the other side, it just, it wasn't enough. I went there and I didn't meddle. So that's something where I'm like, man, I really should have tried harder. <laughs> or like, what should I have done? Like, should I yeah. not, like what that's else a, could I have done, right? Yeah. Like I wanted, I, I, I pushed myself to the limit. I gave 100%, but it's like, there's always needs to be more. I know. And, and it, I'll never be satisfied. Yeah. And it's just, and like, that's the thing. It's almost like, you know, you know you did everything, yes. but there's like that little bit. Yep. It's like, well, what if, you know, this one day I didn't get up at 8, yep. I got up at 7.30. Yep. There's like that 30-minute difference could have, you know, maybe jump like an inch higher. Yeah. But they, but that's like all the differences really are. Right? It, yeah. Like, I mean, I was jumping for centimeters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. It's so <laughs> I forget. No, we use yeah, yeah centimeters. We use, yeah, that's, yeah, that's centimeters. smaller than an inch. I know yeah, that. I, good yeah, good job. Way to go. <laughs> Thank you. High five for that one. Way to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I will definitely say I'm extremely grateful. I'm extremely blessed. I competed at the Olympic Games. I did it unsigned. Yeah. I did it my way. I did it clean. I was healthy. I mean, I had pulled my hamstring at World Championships a couple months prior. So just the journey that I went through was just a, a lot different. But I'm super grateful. I absolutely loved it. Um, but again, I would always want more. Yeah. Always. Well, everyone does. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So that you have that experience. Yeah. And then training again for the 2020 games, yes. which obviously everyone knows that, you know, Got didn't postponed. happen. Postponed. Postponed yes. twice? Once. So, once. Um, yeah. And you were training for that one as well. 2020 and then 2021. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah. I had an Olympic hangover, I will say. Like 2017, like 2016, 2017, I was like, ugh to do this all over again. Like, it was just so much. Yeah. And I was just reeling from, you know, TV appearances and media outlets, and yet I was unsigned. And I was still living at home, and I was right. like, so I came home, and I went to the Olympics, but I'm living in my mom's basement. Like, what is happening? <laughs> so <laughs> I started my, yeah, happen. so I started my own business. So I was like, I'm tired of having the narrative of, woe is me, I'm not signed. I said, I'm going to make a way for myself. So I started my own cleaning company called Flawless Cleaning, and I that was incredible. That was so much fun because it was, most people look at it like, oh, my God, she had to clean toilet, toilets to get to the Olympics. And I think, no, I humbled myself and became an entrepreneur yeah. and started my own business and was very successful in order to make my dreams a reality, right. which is what most people will have to do at some point, right? Like, you're going to have to either work for somebody else else or start your own business to make a way for yourself if you want to truly be happy so it was great I, I you know you have to learn about business and all that other kind of stuff that an entrepreneur learns and it was great so I had a great time doing that um, and I love to clean I have major OCD so it worked out like it was so great yeah, channeling those yeah, yeah. it's like ha ah, this is my this is my this is my flow right now <laughs> so that was great yeah I had I had a great time doing you know having my business and I won another uh, you know, silver medal at the next Pan Am Games and went to Commonwealth Games, did even better. Um, but again, it just, things just got more serious and got more, you know, more pressure. And then my coach left because he was going off to college. He was going to go coach in college. And I respected him for it. You know, I, we were dating at the time and we had bro recently broken up. And I was like, you know what, do what makes you happy. So I had to move to Virginia and, um, I met my now husband, yeah. and it, there was just so many things that happened afterwards, but I was still always training. But again, when, when COVID hit, everything shut down, and I just sat on Zoom with my coach and my trainers, and I was just like, so what now? <laughs> you know, like, what do I do? Yeah. And they were like, you know what? You're going to have to train right where you are. So I borrowed gym equipment, and I would train in my, in my driveway because I don't have... I don't have like a basement or anything. So, yeah. um, cause now I'm in Wildwood. Right. So I moved down to Wildwood and I'm training in the driveway. I'm running on the beach, on the boardwalk. I'm going up to North Wildwood and going to the park and training. And people are seeing me there constantly. And so um, there's a football player. Oh my God, it's how I'm gonna completely butcher this, but McLinchy. Okay. And I saw him. He's like six foot eight. He's huge. Yeah. And I was like, I saw him at the park too. I was like, okay, I don't feel so bad. And NFL, <laughs> yeah, has to do and that. NFL players, yeah. you know, like training out yeah. here too. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I just, it was never excuses. It was just get it done, get it done. And so, I 
tried my absolute hardest and I did everything. And I moved to Virginia to move with my new coach and we trained out there and that was great. We had a private facility and everything was getting better. And as soon as the season was about to open, I moved back home in January and the second, first or second week I got COVID. And everyone was like, you know, it'll be fine. You're okay. You're an athlete. You're in the top 1%. You'll yeah. be fine. You're going to bounce back. Right. And one of the girls from the U.S. pole vault, um, uh, she, was, she won the Olympics, actually. I messaged her because she got COVID a couple months prior. And I was like, how did you deal with it? What was happening? And her biggest thing was, you know, my mind and body weren't connecting for a little bit. So give yourself time. So I did. And about, uh, you know, they said like, what, 12, 14 days? Yeah, whatever it is. And it was like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I was hurting. And I was having major, major heart complications. And uh, I was going to train through it, but I was like, there's two things I don't mess with, my head and my heart. Yeah. Two organs, uh, you know, right. pretty important, yeah. right? They seem, you know, pretty Pretty important. vital, pretty vital. Yeah. So I went to the doctor and I went, well, I went to the hospital. And they were, like, running the EKGs. They were running all the tests. Like, they were like, everything looks fine, but you need to go see a specialist because something's obviously wrong. Right. And, you know, in those moments, everyone's like, oh, you know, everybody said it was fine. And I was like, yeah, but there's something wrong. So go, let's say, two months in, and I'm still I'm seeing different doctors. And mind you, this whole experience, trying to find doctors dur during COVID, was hell. I mean, I'm trying to call the front desk, and they're like, well, what's your insurance? Well, we don't cover that. Well, we need this. We can't, we, you can't see this person without this. Like, it was just a nightmare yeah. of a time. Um, and I documented it all. I just couldn't believe I was dealing with it. And uh, NewJersey.com did a, a, an article on me. Yeah, which is and how I found you. Yeah, yeah. which is so crazy. Yeah. Are you spending more time to track your business income expenses than you really should or wasting hours on bookkeeping tasks that you could be better spent doing what you do best? Wondering how to file your business payroll, sales tax, and personal returns or stressing over unfiled prior year tax returns? Then it's probably time to give Albert and Whitney a call. They can help you reach your business goals and meet your compliance with the ever-changing world of tax, payroll, and reporting requirements. Contact Albert and Whitney today for a no-obligation consultation at 908-217-3989 or head to LLC. Com. All right, so we had to take a quick break just so I can yes. reset the camera. Yes, uh, yes. But now Ken Loomis, your husband, My has hubby. now jumped in, which I think yeah. is a good good timing. Great yeah. timing, uh, you know. A Always great, great timing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Goodness. No, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> all right, so should we do like a quick background on Ken? Just yeah, to like know who he is? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, let's do it. Go all ahead. right, background, go. Background. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> quick 60 seconds. Born and raised in Pensalkin, Maple Shade, New Jersey. Went to Paula Six High School. Went away to King's College in Pennsylvania, came back, taught at Paul VI High School, history teacher, football coach, baseball coach, moved down to Wildwood in the summer of 2016 to be a history teacher and the head football coach of the program. Awesome. Which, I guess, what was that, like two years ago, a year ago? It was like the first win in a while or something uh, like that? 20, like, I think that was, 2020 I think was our I first recall win it was like, like the greatest moment of your life. It, it was easily a top five <laughs> day, top five moment in I my life. I love the answer has changed. I'm um, glad. Top five, yeah. That day, um, I was at the Eagles-Lions Snow Bowl game. That was, okay. that, that's a top five day. Um, I guess marrying my wife should be in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's I was yeah. trying to see if there's any two others that beat that, but I guess not. Or guess that's, not. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Just top three. Sneaking yeah. right in there, top Gold, three. Gold, silver, bronze. Yeah, podium. <laughs> that, that's the medal. I had a medal. Thank yeah. God. You're, Thank yep, God. you're on there, baby. Bronze, oh, but hey, it's all good. I know, it's bronze. Jeez. It's a tough, <clears throat> tough area to be in, man. Yeah, it is. Oh, I did have a two touchdown game in college. I was okay. That's, 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 that's in there. Yeah. That's four. That's nice. competing. That's competing. Yeah. Nice. Two I led, touchdown game. I mean, I led the nation in scoring. It was week one, and I had two touchdowns. I was tied for first. Never scored another touchdown <laughs> again in my life, but I was tied for first in the nation. Yeah, that's pretty scoring. good. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's the whole country. Exactly, the yeah. whole country, all yeah. Division Three. Right, hope, baby. Yeah, this guy. Love that. Yep. <laughs> I think I had this three catches husband. for the rest of the season, but yeah, hey, yeah, that was all day. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now we know who Ken is. Now yes. we know me. Yeah. Right. yeah. So now you could add your own. Super famous, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, that yes. was your last night. Like, everybody knew. Cult you. icon. Yeah, yes. he is. He's a pretty big deal around here just because 
you know, the town is really big on the high school, Wildwood mm. High School. And so it has so much, there's so much pride and history in there. And so him taking over the program and working as hard as he is, and he's a good guy, I will say that. So it I does. Try. I'm okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the town rallies behind him. They always show him support. So it's 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 great. It yeah. Definitely no, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's go back to uh, where we were in the yeah. story before we took our break. Yeah, yeah. So... NewJersey.com did the article on yeah, me, right, and that's, that's, that's how kind of yeah. everybody kind of found out about it. And this is, again, one of those moments of in the dirt, incredible things grow, because because I got COVID and was going through this, I got incredible opportunities. So you had reached out, and now we have this great friendship. Um, I started working with National Geographic. Cool. They reached out. Um, I, you know, I was up for different movies and films and like all these really cool awesome opportunities that had come out from it because I got COVID <laughs> I was an Olympian who got COVID and right. was not recovering yeah right? right so I had to you know you make you make lemonade out of lemons right so um but it was very very difficult and I there was moments where I was scared but I was just like look I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this I'm gonna be fine I just have to keep going yeah and and, you know, Ken was there with me every step of the way, and he would just see me on the couch being like, what am I going to do? Another doctor's appointment. What's going on? Another test. And it was driving me crazy because I was like, I need to train. The more time that moves, the more that I'm losing. Right. And really, athletes shouldn't be um, missing practice or missing training three days in a row. Yeah. So, like, now I'm on, like, two weeks, three right. weeks. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. So I was getting antsy in that way, but I was like, I'm still going to do well. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do what I have to do. And there were different verdicts every so often, but there was one verdict that after I got one of these big tests, I don't even remember what it is because it was just, I want to block it out. Yeah. But uh, they didn't like the way my heart looked. And they said, there's a lot of inflammation. We're going to have to shut you down. Like, the Olympics is not going to be possible. And I remember sitting on my... I woke up because I asked my husband to answer the call. Because I wasn't... I was like, I don't, I, I don't know what he's going to say. Yeah. So I sat up, and I, he put it on speakerphone. He said that. And it was real, and it, it sucked. But I, I grabbed a bottle of rosé and M&M's, peanut M&M's. And I was just like, well, this is life now. You know, like, <laughs> this is it. Here we are. Uh, here we are. We made it. And, um, you know, I was just like, what am I going to do? You know, I got to figure things out. And from that same article from NewJersey.com, somebody um, from, the, from the Jets sports medicine team reached out to me. Okay. And was like, hey, like, let's figure this, some things out. And I, thank God, I drove up the two and a half, three hours, and I went and I met with him, and he saw the discs and saw everything, and he goes, yeah, no, you're fine. Your heart just looks different. You need to get back to training. Yeah. And it just went from day to night, and I was ready for it. Like, you would think that I would have to recover. You, you would think I'd have to... I was Started like, done. slow. Nope. I was like, done. Yeah. Let's do it. Right. He's, like, he, he's like, take it slow. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah whatever. Go. <laughs> you gave me the okay. Yeah. I'm all in. And so it took a little bit, and I my heart rate was crazy. Like, there were so many different things, but I was determined to get back into it. And I and I did. So, um, you know, I started traveling. And, again, it was, it was so much more difficult because of COVID. So usually where meet directors would, you know, pay for certain athletes to come, I had to pay everything on my own. So I was driving to Ohio. I was driving like, and everywhere in between for these different meets and competing at any meet so that my world ranking would gotcha. continue. Because you need to be at a certain level. I needed to, to be, be 32. Yeah. I needed to be 32. And at the time I was... 38. Okay. And I was like, I'm so close. And I, mind you, I missed my entire indoor season. So to still be ranked that high, I was like, I have a chance. I can do this. Right. And nobody else from my country had um, had qualified. So I was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. And uh, we had Bahama Nationals because my country canceled their nationals. And I had to miss one of our friend's weddings at the last minute and they understood which was so sweet sure. and I was 
rank 36 at this meet. And I was like, okay, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm doing well. My country, I went to the Olympics the last time. I'm the senior athlete. It should be good. And they announced it. I was warming up, and they announced that they had selected somebody else to go to the Olympic Games who was ranked like 100 and something. So I was kind of devastated in that moment, but I was, I was like, okay, it had nothing to do with me. Right. I did everything I possibly could. Yeah. And my, my, literally my, my New Year's resolution was control what you can control. Other than that, you shouldn't have a reaction. And so for me, I was like, did I do everything I could? Yes. Did I try and stay as healthy as I possibly could? Yes. Did I go after it and do and train as best as I possibly could under the circumstances? Yes. Did you just find out you're not going to the Olympics after five years? Yes. How are you going to handle that? I was like, I'm in the Bahamas. Could be worse. <laughs> yeah, right. Could There's be worse. worse. Definitely worse spots right? to find that out. I did, and that was, that was one of those moments where people are like, wow, I can't believe you're like, and everyone was like, oh, Priscilla, you're good. You're 36. Like, they're going to take you. I know. So, and for everybody to understand, each country, can, if, nobody, if nobody qualifies, they can select a male and a female to represent the country at the Olympics. Gotcha. And so, um, no female had qualified in track and field, and... I, as a senior athlete, being, you know, so close, being the top 36 in the world, I thought, I was like, okay, like, they'll take me, and they didn't. And so I realized that I left it into other somebody else's hands, and that made me upset. That was right. the only thing that I, I, I actually got upset about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it, was, it was an incredible journey, but I knew that I was going to retire after two Olympics. I knew that. Yeah. So going in, everyone's like, you're not going to go for one more. You have so much left in you. The amount of stress that it causes to try to be top 20 in the world at anything takes a lot. And money. And I, yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It right. takes money. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes focus. It takes, you know, I, I needed facilities. Everybody's getting better. I can't stay the same. Right. I can't continue to train at the park while somebody, you know what I mean? So yeah, the circumstances are different. And I set out to do everything I wanted to. So there was nothing, like, there was no hard feelings. There was no animosity. There was no anything. I was just, like, control what you can control. Right. So I retired as soon as I got back, and I was so happy. I was super excited for the journey, and I knew that I wanted to spend time with my husband. Yeah. I wanted to start traveling with him. I wanted to build a life. The first two years we were married, because of COVID, thankfully, we actually were together. Other than that, the first... Uh, Three weeks after we got married, I moved. Yeah. So, yeah. like, right. see, we're married. I'm <laughs> going to Virginia. All right, babe. Love you. Later. Yeah. So, my priorities changed, right? Yeah. Like, I wanted to make sure that my, I was that symbol and that example of truth and yeah. reality. Right. And so, retiring was great. We had a retirement and our two year wedding anniversary all in one day. It was great. We had a great time. And now, you know, it's it's a chapter in my life that I'm very, very blessed to have, but I learned so much on that journey as well. Yeah. And so I'm very, very grateful for being the underdog for all that I went through because it helped me become a really badass warrior, and that makes me really, really happy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Awesome. And that, that's why I want to make sure be, that my camera didn't go out of time, <laughs> just because I want to make sure we got that whole story in on camera. So, it's a little um, all right. So now, yes. retired life. What's re, what's retirement like? <laughs> it's like some retirement is beautiful. I had Chinese food. Nice. I hadn't had Chinese food in seven and a half years. It was glorious. Yeah. Sat on my couch watching Netflix and was just fat. Did so, not move <laughs> for four months. <laughs> Just her butt imprint in the couch. Yeah. I think it's still there. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those. But I love her. And she's making up for lost time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Definitely. Nothing when you nothing worked out six that. days a week. Yeah. For ten years straight. Right. You could take a couple months and just sloth yeah. it. Yeah. It hasn't yeah. even been a year yet. That's no, wild. It's been, too. Yeah. It's, we're getting almost. Almost there. Year. Yeah. August. August is when I retire. Right. And so I'm like, wow. It hasn't like it, to me. I was just like, I wanted to indulge. I wanted to enjoy this first year. I still have a six pack, which I'm very, very blessed to have. I don't know how it's still there because I haven't done a thing. I worked out in January, and I said I also um, worked out in January. Yeah, yeah. That was also the last time I worked out. 
<laughs> what do you know? You, it was so bad. <laughs> I worked out and I was like, I don't want Something to be here. I don't want to do this too soon. Too yeah. soon. Yeah. So I, yeah, I didn't. Um, I worked out twice and I was like, this is not my journey. And uh, so then I got, you know, I got a job and it's, you know, like the regular everyday life. But I love not working out. I love, like, I love just living life and being able to experience things because I do have this. I have right. this memory of, like, what I used to do and what I did, but now I'm just really, really enjoying life and trying to move forward in the best way possible and use the gifts that God has given me to be the best version of myself. Yeah. And so I started a business, my own business, right. and I started a nonprofit, and they have been absolutely incredible. It's been uh, amazing. And I love that entrepreneurship. And I think that's what the cleaning business gave me was I loved working for myself. I loved having people know that when they're with me or they're working with me, they're going to get top quality. They're going to get 100,000%. They're going to get the best of the best. And that was what's really incredible. And yeah. so... Well, because now you're channeling all like that... All of it. ...drive into this new endeavor. Yes. Which, you know, if you're yes, on yes. the tracks, get off because the train's coming through, it seems mm -hmm. like. Yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how to... I don't yep, know how to relax. Train. I don't know how to... I don't know how to chill. Yeah. Uh, in the greatest it's, show... It comes it, with practice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. <laughs> We'll get you there. It, uh, I can, and it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's a great skill you developed. Been chilling for 32 years. Yes, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. All right. yeah. Well, we're 33 now. I know. <laughs> we're good. It's fine. We have more time to practice. That's all yeah. it means. Yes, we do. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, everything is going really great. And now we live in Wildwood and it's such a different lifestyle. And I, and I'm so blessed to like, to be here, to be in this kind of community and to just live my truth. Yeah. Live my best life. Right. Yeah. And as I, you know, as I say that I really structure my life in movies. <laughs> so like this first movie that I did was great. It was yeah. phenomenal. It was, it was a great time. I learned a lot. And now this sequel is just going to be so much better. It's kind of like Toy Story, right? Yeah. Toy Story 4 was so phenomenal. So like as you get better. It's an interesting take. Toy Story 4. Yeah. I was going to go like Bad Boys. Bad no. Boys 2 is so no, much no. better than Bad Boys the original. Is it? You think? Yes. Bad Boys original was great, but Bad Boys 2. Yeah, you got Gabrielle Union steps really? into the show. Oh, yeah, okay. come on now. <laughs> So just, I'm a Pixar fan, as, as everybody yeah. knows. I mean, so. I, I mean, like I'm the and same it's Michael age Bay. as Andy. <sighs> Are like you? Andy, Andy from Toy Story. Yeah. Like you, we wow, grew up basically yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinda, you're right. Right. I think you know? he was. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I was in college when he was in college. Oh, awesome! You know? That's so great. When he but had to I give his guess. toys away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like yeah. you, like you, but you felt for it, right? Like so, Toy Story one through four, everyone loved it. They see, like I couldn't even say Shrek because the, sh no. the last Shrek, Shrek, Shrek wasn't one, good. Shrek no, one's phenomenal. Yeah, Shrek All the rest one are just, was, yeah. Shrek two was really no, good. Shrek one is the gold standard. Yeah, gold standard for of any a movie trilogy. ever yeah. made. <laughs> like, it's like The movie, Godfather. So. <laughs> Goodfellas, A Bronx Tale, <laughs> Shrek. Shrek. They're all right there. Yeah. Tied Same for first. basic story. I know, right? You know? Same. Yes. Same thing. Same genre. Just yep. misunderstood. Exactly. People. Exactly. <laughs> right, it's all about the family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, so um, I mean, but yeah, this this this, this new movie is is pretty awesome, and I a lot of people are like, well, what are you doing? What's next? What's going on? Right. And I'm just like, I will never block my blessings. So anything can happen, and if it if I feel like it's meant for me, I'm gonna do it. So I started my Priscilla Loomis LLC company to do motivational speaking and really inspire the next generation and speak to colleges, but also talk to companies and take that Olympic mindset and give it to people for every day. Because it is a practice. It is a habit. And there's going to be so many more trials and tribulations that you have to go through, but it just makes you so much better. So I think I love this business. I love talking. I, I started uh, doing like third grade classes and we like work out together and we have a great time. But it's like little nuggets of knowledge, and then we go all the way up to corporations where we do like a wellness day or a wellness retreat. Um, and I'm, you know, I want to promote more women entrepreneurs. So I love it because every day it's just working on making people better. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Absolutely not. Definitely not. I started sort of working out. I partnered with this company, Climber, and it's in my house. Okay. So it's good. I don't yeah. have to run. I don't have to leave my house. It's right. amazing. Yeah, that's great. Right up my alley. Yeah. So that I've started working out, started this journey, and then I have my nonprofit, which is dedicated to my mother, and um, it's the Frederick Foundation, and we support single parent households. And 
and I give out scholarships and what I want to be the random act of kindness. I want to be the help that people need. But our main goal is to assist with single parent households, communities, and just making the world a better place. So those are my three endeavors. But if you ask me tomorrow, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I'm starring in a new movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I went into Philly and I was an extra in the movie Hustle. Okay. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. sure. Like, why not do that? Yeah. Um, I would love to go to stunts. I'll have to watch it again and see if I can pick you no, out. No, you can't. She's not. Oh. They cut nah, me out. They give oh, sons yeah. of bitches. It's okay. I'm, I'm really going to. Thanks, I'm, Adam. I, but yeah, I, honestly, it. working I used on to an like Adam, Adam Sandler. I love Adam Sandler. Working on his set was amazing. We, we did get to go to the premiere. We did cool. go to the oh, premiere cool. in yeah. Philly. Yeah. He was awesome. Tobias Harris was awesome. Shout out Tobias. You're great. He's a giant. I don't know how he fit in those theater seats. They're too big for me. Yeah. Dude's like 6'7. Yeah, he's huge. It's insane. So, I mean, it's just been fun. I'm able to open up my life to all these kinds of opportunities, and different schools are hiring me across the country. So I'm able to just live my life in yeah. this new this new venture. Right. So the new chapter, yeah, the new story, my new story. Um, all right, so I've now decided that we're gonna make basically make this that what we just did yes. its own standalone episode just <laughs> because we went for almost 50 minutes. Nice. <laughs> so this is gonna Sorry, be an episode. No, no, it was great. I mean, I think it. It's just a phenomenal story, and I think just having it as its own standalone thing is going to be well, thank you. great. Um, and well, you're we, done. You can go home now. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's drive another three hours back. Um, but, uh, but so what we should do is make sure people know where to go to find out more about you. So, like, where would you Hi, want yeah. me to direct people? So I have my website, which is uh, PriscillaLumis.com. You can also follow me on Instagram, because that's, like, the easiest way, which is Priscilla underscore Frederick. And it's the purple haired icon so you know who it is yep. and yeah I think that's it those are like the two biggest ways yeah, like, you, don't, you between... don't do Twitter no I don't not, do Twitter you don't do the tweets I don't do the tweets yeah I'm not very good it's overrated it's just so many things. How it's many so things can we juggle? You, you have Instagram, you have TikTok, yeah. you have Facebook, you, I mean Twitter. I mean, right. what else do I have to I'm say? Giving, I'm giving yeah. people Snapchat. Like, I have people that work for me now. So like one, they run the, the TikTok, yeah. they yep. do the blog, they do other stuff for me. Yeah. They do like new podcast stuff. And yeah, yeah. I just, like, and even my podcast, like like my podcast, we've had to kind of like take a step back because we're so busy. Yeah. We have all these things that are happening, but we loved it. I was like, I don't have time. Like yeah. I can't do all of this. Right. And I have a full time job. Yeah, especially this time. <laughs> Year. Yeah, exact summer down the down the shore. It's it's busy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, it's just about life and opening it up. But yes, yeah, so follow me. Follow the journey. Who you never know what's going to happen. That's right. So, uh, and there's an exciting project. I'm hoping that's coming out. Um, in a couple months and stuff. So there's a lot of cool things that are happening. Yeah. Yeah, and he's along for the journey, which makes it a lot cooler. Right. Love yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just riding in the sidecar. Yeah. <laughs> just cruising. It's a great way to be. Yeah, just chilling. With the wind in my hair, <laughs> what's left of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Same. Feel you. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. So we'll make sure that we put all those in the show notes. Thank um, you. And then when we're done with this, we'll just basically start up a brand new episode, uh, which will be all about Wildwood. So make sure you listen to that one. Yeah. Which I guess will be like the following week, whenever these do come out. Yeah. Um, but, it's going to be uh, awesome. Yeah. We'll make sure we put all those in the show notes. So this has been the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. My guest was Priscilla Frederick Loomis and Ken Loomis. Yep. Yay. Uh, we were here at Mud Hen in Wildwood, New Jersey. I'm Mike Ham. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Some people I see Crowd the lights on me